Hey, everybody. How's it going? It's Jeff here with The Embroidery Nerd, and I'm joined by Justin Arment from JA Digitizing and The Embroidery Nerd as well. And today we are going to be exploring in brilliance a little bit. Um, we've picked a piece of logo art, and we're going to be attempting to apply what we know into a software that we don't use as frequently as what we do. And it's going to just kind of be a learning, exploring experience. Justin exactly. agreed. <laughs> we're, acting like, we're acting like Eric today. He, well, I don't know about that. I think he knows what he's doing in the software. <laughs> but let's go ahead and drop in some comments here. We have Marla. Hello. How's it going? We have Frank. Good morning. Good evening. Good morning, Frank. It's evening here, morning there. And we have Carol. Hello from uh, somewhere Valley, Oregon. <laughs> I, I don't think I could pronounce that. Willamette maybe. And then we have Letty. Hi, guys. Hello, Letty. And I guess we can jump right into it. Maybe. We'll see. I've just got the art. Um, I was very uh, happy when Justin sent it over to me. I'm not going to lie. And copy and paste. There we go. So where do you want to start, Justin? You ready? You know, you know what? I'm going to let you start really quick. <laughs> Jeff, you got this. Maybe, yeah. maybe. I'm, a, I'm just going to let you start really quick. I just have to do something really fast behind the scenes here. Uh-huh. He's doing something. I'm standing here looking good while we're doing it. Oh, let's see here. This could be fun. I'm going to... Oh, there we go. No. There we go. I was trying to figure out which screen I was going to share. And hopefully, yep, I got the right one. So let's bring that up. I'm going to grab a couple more comments. If I didn't catch Letty's, I did I did this time. Hey, Letty, how's it going? We have Amelia. Hello. Uh, Sedona. Hello from Leesburg, Florida. I'm glad to have you here. And Frank, it's 2 a.m. here now. Uh, I'm usually up about 2 a.m. every night, too. <laughs> so too. the first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to select the art, and I'm going to change it to inches, and we're about 2 and 15 sixteenths. I, I don't, <laughs> I don't work well without decimals. So we're just going to round that up to three inches. And can I do that in both directions? Nope. Only one. That's good. Yeah, I guess. Cause I have the aspect ratio locked right here. So we'll go with that. And now I'm going to change it back to millimeters because I like to work in millimeters and lock selected objects. That one's important because I don't want to do that apparently. <laughs> let's see let's try that again lock and hide no i don't think i want to lock and hide it there we go lock and i can move it that's not the right key justin i'm drowning here <laughs> we'll just, we you just know, don't touch it you know far more than i do about this software i know i think that's why you should be driving <laughs> <laughs> so to create i'm gonna go to the create tab and I have all these wonderful options. I'm very familiar with this one to draw a column with left and right points. Uh, I've got my run stitch here, my satin border, applique, motif run. All right, so let's see here. I'm gonna try and decide the best objects for this. And I think what I'm gonna do is, let me grab the ruler. This is probably the most important tool in any software. And that's 22 there. That is probably less than that. <laughs> Everybody's laughing at me. That is 11.2 millimeters. So I could probably throw that in a satin stitch, but I don't really want to. Um, this coming here is a eight millimeters. So again, I could probably throw that in a satin stitch if I needed to. 8.2. I think I'm going to drop some fills in here. So let's go with draw with points, and I want to make sure that I'm doing a complex fill. There we go. And I think I'll just, I'll branch it here. So I'm going to start there. Not that button. <laughs> oh, look, I, I made a fill. A uh, no, yep. I keep looking over the comments. I'm waiting for somebody that knows what they're doing to show up and laugh at me. <laughs> we all know that's coming. So let's go with a run stitch here. And left node, right node. 
Oh, oh, oh. There we go. Now I'm I'm actually throwing notes here, so I feel better about myself. One point, two point, curve that slightly down there. Down there, up, curve there, and I'll hit enter. And now I've got this nice little border. And I'm going to say close the outline like that. And then I want it to be a fill. Ha! Ah, we're getting there, Justin. Don't laugh at me. <laughs> I'm almost there. He's almost there. He's almost with me. So I'm going to drop that. I'm going to, again, draw with points. And I'm going to run right up here. And if I want to do a curve node, yep, curve node is control. So I'll come right to about right there. And we'll do a run stitch. And now, again, draw with points, run stitch, because I don't know the quick command for that one. And I'll come up here and go there, there, there. And we'll go right there and get that. I'm going to close the object, and I'll apply a fill to it again. Hey, I'm like two for two, Justin. I'm feeling pretty good about myself right now. <laughs> I haven't Ooh. even imported the art yet. Oh, you can copy and paste it in. Okay. That's, yep, what I did. It makes things a little bit easier. All right. So, again, we're going to draw with points. Go there and come across there. There. I probably just could have copied and pasted it and flipped it. Let's do that. In theory. There we go. Got it. Copy. Paste. We're getting there. We'll bring it over here. I'm feeling pretty good. Nope. <laughs> Not that button. That's rotate. Rotate. No. Here we go. Here we go. Flip. Oh, I have to hold. I have to select it first. There we go. I'm feeling pretty good about myself, Justin. This is this is <laughs> this is coming out all right. There we go. Right about there. All right. So let's take a look here at my objects. I want to make sure that I am in create mode, and now I can look at my um, options here. I'm at point four density, which I think is good. Stitch length of three point four. It pull. Yep, those are all good. I'm um, looking for my angle of ascent, overall pattern, scale, aspect ratio. All those are good. The underlay, I've got per perpendicular and contour. Density inset, those are fine. I want to tie in at entry there. And that all looks good to me. So we'll come over here, and I want to make sure, again, all of those look good there. This should is my start and stop point. So I need to make sure I move my start and stop points. That's important. And whatever I just moved, I probably shouldn't have. There we go. Stop point right there. So we're going to start over here and stop over there. That's what I want. This, we're going to start right there. I want to make sure that I stop over here. These long, I'm going to start right there. These long diagonal lines here are travel machine runs. There we go. So I want to make sure that I get my start and stop points moved so that it doesn't jump or trim. And let's go ahead and bring that. I don't want to tie off right there. I'll do that right there. And now my angle is at 31, 12, 14, 15 degrees. I'm going to set all my angles here at 15 degrees because that's Justin's favorite number. <laughs> 15 there we go and this one here again at 15 i'm not a huge fan of putting um fills directly on zero line neither i don't know if you do that very often i don't unless there's a reason unless there's a reason yeah like maybe a fade that's a perfect top to bottom fade where you don't want the stitches to lay that way yeah Although if you're fading like that, then you can throw it. I mean, you can fade on an angle. I, I could see why you wouldn't, though. <laughs> let's, right. let's not mock me too much. All right, so left and right inputs there. And now we're set up. Uh, we ended over here. So I want to make sure that I start. I'm going to start right here because I'm going to end right there. So we'll do left point. 
And now I'm looking at my stitch length, and it is at 1.1. So I'm, I do want to overlap a bit here. I'll come down to right there and I'm going to set that. Alt, almost, oh, there we go. I found it. It's alt key, Justin. And there we go. I know that command. So a lot of times when you're, when you're going from a software that you regularly use and you're familiar with just like you know always the question of what's the best digitizing software to to buy or to use out there and if you, if you know how to digitize and you know the techniques that are that are needed to get quality digitizing it doesn't matter what software you do yes right some some software make it easier than others um but like when you when you get a new software like this, or when like a couple of years ago when I my move from Wings to to Wilcom, there's a learning curve. Uh, oh yeah, hotkeys. There's there's uh, tools that are named differently in software, um, but they're pretty much you're gonna have the same thing. You're gonna have a satin stitch tool. How you plot the points may be different. Uh, those of you that use Wilcom, there's, you know, a satin A, satin B, satin C, and how you actually plot your points are different on all those type of tools. There's going to be your, your fill tool, a running stitch, and a manual stitch tool. And those are the basic tools that you're going to have in any software. Uh, the bells and whistles are going to be the things that are going to be the difference. If there's, you know, automated densities or automated shortest, uh, shortest jump or automated uh motifs or anything like that is going to be where the the software is different from each other but <clears throat> we just kind of wanted to jump head first into a software that neither of us are familiar with and to check out to see how it differs i don't know justin i'm feeling pretty good about myself you you're doing well i i'm i actually stopped Messing with it, I'm just watching you because <laughs> I haven't had the opportunity to play with it lately, and I, I want to, but at least have, I can learn a little bit something here. Have fun with this, Jeff. Hold my beer. All right, so <laughs> I've got that travel run down now, and the reason why I did that is you can see I digitized this right side here. Um, and I came up to right there. And so I can actually mirror all that. If I run across here, I can mirror all of that because my start point's right there. I can flip it over. And then I don't have to digitize that object. And whenever you guys can save yourself from digitizing, whenever you can copy and paste, you should copy and paste, in my opinion. Absolutely. I think when you, are working, when you are working with a, a symmetrical design like that, that's a lot of times it's, uh, when you're when you're planning ahead or planning your pathing, you, if you keep that in mind, where if I do this section by itself and I don't tie it into anything else, that's the same on the other side. You know that you can just piecemeal it together, copy paste, and you know you're not going to tie your hands when you duplicate it to the other side because they are exactly the same. And we're not going to say why, but I'm nudging this stuff over one object at a time. And I'll go there, and I got that one and that one, and this one just needs a little slide. Hey, we're looking good. So I'm going to grab a couple here. We've got Cindy watching from Odessa, Texas. Martin, hi, everyone. I'm late again. You're not that late. I checked my um, imaginary <laughs> watch. Uh, Facebook user, so they must be in a group. Spot on, Justin. Love how you talk your way through, Jeff. Candice, I tried to switch from hatch to sweat hatch from Floriani because my digitizer uses Wilcon, and I'm still lost. I think you were doing okay. Yeah, it's, you know, it's different. Every time you move between one software and another one, you forget all the hot keys. I know one hot key off the top of my head in here, and that is the C key, which gives you the satin input. And that saves me a lot of time. So don't forget to save every now and then. 
and Newport, Rhode Island. I'm going to try and figure out who that is because they're in a group, so we can't quite see it. And I am now genuinely curious. I always use hotkeys from Illustrator when I'm trying to digitize. And I'm like, that's not going to work here. I could totally see that. That's why I don't. That's why I don't use any graphic software. Uh, is that why? <laughs> that's why I don't use Photoshop. I'm sure that's the reason. So, uh, ha on the spot on comment is from Lisa. I could have been incognito. You could be. You could still be incognito. We don't know for sure, but probably not. So now I want to go back to create. So Justin, if I need to edit, then this is the the edit stitches tool. Okay. Create. So if you select an object when you're in the create mode, boom, boom, boom. And yep. There we go. Oh, I didn't want to do that. Time out. So when you're, when you select an object in create mode, that's when you can actually edit like your points, okay. your nodes and stuff. Your nodes. Okay. Yep. And change the, sti the stitch line here. So I'm going to drive a run stitch though. And it's going to go from right there, I'm pretty sure, is where we left off. And come down. And I'm going to come straight up from here. That seems like a good plan. And I'll hit the C key. So, Justin, when I'm, doing, when I'm done with this one, it's your turn, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I just, just playing around over here with a satin tool, knowing that my left and right clicks in Wilcom do something different. As far as your nodes, straight and curved lines, uh huh. That necessarily doesn't work in this one. Uh uh. So so how do you how do you toggle from straight and curved no nodes? So you hold the control key down. Is it the control? Okay. Yep. So it's the control. That's it. I'm, I'm not going to say it's unique to this software because I have used other software that you hold down the control key. Wilcom. I mean, um, Wings was like that as well. Yeah, and I'm I'm pretty sure the Chroma software is. I think in I know that in other software I've used, that's one of the first things. If I can change it in the preferences, I change it in the preferences so that I can right click. There we go. And we'll come across. That looks like a good idea. Yep. And let's go to select. And I drew a vector object. <laughs> there we go. Let's say I want it to be stitches. There we go. See? Oh, that doesn't look good. <laughs> Let's go edit those nodes. And there. And it looks like, yep, I didn't drop that far enough. There we go. And there we go. Oh, Suzanne, she's calling me out. Geez, how many people do you know in Rhode Island? I know a few, actually. Like, maybe five. They're all my favorites. <laughs> so, I can see here that I have an issue, and that is we've got some, we've got a sequencing issue here. So, let's go through the sequence, and we'll find out what's going on. From there to there, there to there. That fill from there to there. Run. That's something weird. We can get rid of that. So then I, yep, that fill. And then I move from the fill. Where am I ending on the fill? Right there. That's That seems logical. Maybe. Oh, I didn't want to do that, Justin. Time out. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out how to do a fill. There we go. That ends there. So you have to use the close object tool. Which is the tool that allows you to close your object. <laughs> <laughs> that one, Justin, it's that one. Um, so that's the that's I call it the tomato. Because to me, up on the top of the screen right here, it reminds me of a tomato. Where? Oh, okay. <laughs> How come my tomato's not it's grayed out? I'm sitting here wondering how many um, buttons on your screen you're looking at and wondering which one's the tomato. I, I can see it. It's just grayed out right now. 
Oh, hold on. I think we've got a we've got somebody that knows what they're doing here. So let's cap let's grab some con comments. We've got Bell Ak Akins. Atkins. Hello everyone. Hello. We have Bebby Bevy Jean watching from the UP. And tomato button. So I'm not the only one that calls it that. And or right click, control right click to end. Now we're trying that, Justin. Control right click. All oh, snap. Yep. Somebody here is <laughs> knows what they're doing and in brilliance. There Isn't we go. Lisa? And a fill. We got a fill. I'm still lost. Yeah, <laughs> you're still lost. Justin, it's so easy. I just showed you. You push these I buttons. Make, I can make a, a, a satin stitch. So when you're digitizing, like digitize a run stitch outline. Okay. And then control and right click, and that'll close it. Oh, so it's not like Wilcom where you choose your function first. Right. And then got yeah, it. Yeah, he's got it. So it. Suzanne, Lisa, I have a feeling this might be Lisa Shaw. I'm drinking beer with you. Yep. After hours with Justin and Jeff. She's Just drinking beer, laugh, pointing and laughing at us. I'm sure she is. I would be too. <laughs> Those guys have no idea what they're doing. Yeah. Although this, I do find these lines here interesting. And I keep looking at this because I feel like those are machine movements. And I want to make sure that it's not um, sequenced improperly. There we go. Oh, I see what I did here. There. That's the issue. That goes to there. Problem solved. I'm not going to sing the problem solved song, though, Justin. Just I'm just saying. That one's not coming out. <laughs> And so, uh, Bevy Jean, sorry, late. I was just watching this and in Brilliant. She calls this a tomato too. Nice. And you're doing fabulous and I'm learning how someone thinks other than me. I'm pretty sure. Yep. This is the point and laugh show. No, actually, this is kind of fun. I really like to learn new things and it's fun to learn. Aha. Did you see that, Justin? It was a miracle. No, I learned I'm, something. I'm trying to figure out how to make a fill stitch right here. <laughs> so, all right. Real quick. Wait. I have to jump out. It was, oh. Have fun, Cindy. All right. I'm ready. Okay. At the top, you got your little icons that are the draw. Yeah. Uh-huh. And these the block that are stitch. Uh-huh. And pad. Uh -huh. So what tools are you using to actually plot your points? Okay. Knuckle crack. We got this. So these are like draw with easier curves, freehand, nodes, right? So yeah. I draw with nodes, and then you select your stip stitch type you want applied to it. Run, satin. Ah. And then... And like this one is the left and right alternating inputs, which would then like default it. Column A or satin A. Yeah. Okay. We got this. Well, I got it, I think. Justin's over there still trying to figure out <laughs> how to make a fill. Oh, we have Suzanne here. I just like hanging out with you guys. We enjoy you hanging out with you guys too. This is all sorts of fun in the comments here. Hopefully Lisa's not like, they butchered it, <laughs> even though we kind of are. But her, her, and, her and Eric are going to be talking tomorrow. We're like, we should revoke their brilliance. <laughs> <laughs> we fired them. Yeah. Oh, there we go. So I have this shape here, and I can tell you I'm not overly thrilled with how this is. I mean, I'm going to take off the 3D view for just a hot second here because I can see this is tapering it, and I don't want it, I want it to cut flat right here. The idea that I that I laid these nodes down with was that it was going to lay um, horizontally, and it didn't lay horizontally. So 
Um, let's see here. Bevy Jean, it seems she had to do clicking to go between Stitch Artist and the other programs. Yep. Um, I'm not jumping between the other programs, fingers crossed. Uh, you are you you are pushing buttons, no fear. I love it. And Suzanne, we can plan some fun things, maybe a harbor tour, you know. I think that I made it cool. feel <laughs> Justin. I've done one great thing today. <laughs> Mic drop. I made a fill. Made a fill. Perfect. Now manipulate it. <laughs> one step at a time. Yes. All right. So if I set that there, that goes there. And for some strange reason. Oh, Justin, just in case you didn't know, if you hold down the space bar button, mm -hmm. it turns your mouse into a palm and you can pan. Oh, yeah. That's like um, Illustrator. Oh, well, then I think we need to officially ask that they remove that function because we can't be like Illustrator. I don't use that. Um, Wilcom has it. Wilcom, though, if you're digitizing, you just bump. Right. But you could, I think it's P is pan. It'll grab and pan the screen i don't think that's okay let's go and there and there and there and there regenerate the object did it work Patton. for some strange reason my tomato is there i don't know if i like that uh-huh and it's satin stitches and maybe i have to get rid of my tomato yeah, that didn't work either. Ha ha, I made a fill. Hey, I changed it to a satin. Oh, this could be wrong. Let's not do that. We're going to try this one more time, Justin. That one. Okay. That one. And... This is going to be a success. I can already feel it. There, there 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 and i'll go there and since nobody can see the art and so it doesn't matter if i actually mess this up or not i keep right clicking and ending my sentence yeah you should do that you know i wonder if i'm trying to do something that the object can't do i do have inclination lines though and that is very important when it comes to doing things. Let's go there. No, not that one. Create. Add inclinations to my satin, the barbell. Yeah, I see how this is working here. So let's grab that and we'll just change it to a fill. Change it back to satin. Barbell. Nope. Other barbell. There we go. Oh, yeah. Justin, I just won. I'm really glad we have Lisa in the comments. Yes. That's, that's going to be my... Um, there. Ah. My saving grace is that Lisa's here, and she can tell me what I'm doing wrong. So let's see here. Harbor tour. Ha ah, I was just messing with an old co-worker, but come to Newport for some fun times. And add inclinations to your satin, the barbell. So, Justin, that's how we add inclinations to our satin. I feel it's better. Now. Yeah. You got that, right? You're like yeah. really caught up with me, aren't you? Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. So. I'm still trying to do straight points when I'm hitting curves. Oh, you have to hold down the control key. I think we need both our screens up there, though. Wouldn't that be cool if we could share two screens at once and then people could that laugh at be. us? in parallel so now i'm measuring here and i'm 2.3 millimeters there and i'm 6.1 there so i'm probably going to do this in a satin all the way across let's go there because that one's going to be split and here you go you guys need a beer justin we have permission we can drink alcohol while we do this i wish i have regular drinking here i feel like that's the um once we're told we can that should be like a rule that sticks. Yep. Open that door. 
<laughs> and I'm going to connect there. Hmm. I don't know if I like that. Back base, back base, back base, back base. Control. Click and click there and then there and there. And control and no, nope, that didn't do it. We'll drop it that in there. And let's do this again. I've I've got you know if I didn't know that the C key did a classic satin, I'd be in trouble. It's the T key. C as in Charlie. Oh. Okay. Go there, and for funsies, we'll go across. And there and there. And we'll do that again. Go there and there. Uh oh. There we go. Troll. Boom. 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 There and there. Aha. Okay. So I had one that didn't work. Let's diagnose it here. After being create, I'm in create. It says satin stitches. Is it the tomato? Was it because I had the tomato? I think it was because I had the tomato. There, select that. That one. And we're going to go back to the create tool. Got it. Oh, that is an interesting piece that I've got right there that we're going to get rid of. And there. Okay, I got it. And let's look for the barbell. Yep, I think I need the barbell. No, I don't need the barbell. Let's change it to a fill stitch. Aha, back to a satin. And now I can use... No, no, I can't use the barbell. <laughs> oh, Letty says, why don't you do it a solid and cut out the shape on the right? So the reason I didn't do that is because I did it as a... Um, there and there. I did these as satin stitches. And so I didn't carve them out because of that um i don't think i can put a hole inside of a satin stitch i mean traditionally in most softwares i don't think that you can drop a hole inside of a satin stitch i don't know about you justin uh no but currently my stitch has no stitch direction so we are playing that oh there it is i know what went wrong in theory i right, had dropping the, inclination lines where's the no to edit tool so you go under the create into the create mode because we're being creative. And then you select select an object. And that brings you into the nodes. I feel like this maybe should have been a race. <laughs> to see yeah. you could get it done the fastest. Cause then I could have won. You'd have told me I was cheating though. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, you are cheating. Somehow or another. You're getting it done. You got to be cheating. All right. Let's go there. And that is... Ew, I don't know if I like that. Let's go to the measure tool. Hey, the measure tool is M. That's convenient. 8.7 millimeters at 110 degrees. So just so you know, Justin, on the bottom left, if you use your ruler, that's where it shows up. I learned that the other day. Well, okay. Maybe a little more than the other day. Let's go there. And I'll just drop some points there. And let's go. That should be good there. And we'll control and control. And we'll put a line there. Ha! I got a fill. I'm actually going to leave that at zero degrees, I think. Hmm. What if I go to 15? No, we'll go to 12 degrees. That's my nice round number for right now. Okay, so I got it. Now I need to fix the color. There we go. And I want it to be red. Go. 
Aha, uh -huh. and we will go with light red. Perfect. And draw with points. Justin, you got this, right? You you know what you're doing? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm still trying to cut and paste there. Oh, that's um control C. This is how I get things thrown at me from across the room. If I could throw it, I would. <laughs> oh. You know, all in all, I can get through this. I, I do like some of the features that are really, really cool. And sometimes when I can, like, digitize against Justin and still get it to work, I like those too. <laughs> there and we'll go right there and there and i'm just gonna feather those two together like that and i think that that would make a pretty good cape but i can see a travel line and we don't want that so um i find it interesting that it starts and ends at the same point and i'm not a huge fan of that but we'll have a start and end there oh i hit and then the next there we go. And we're going to move our start point right to the fill ends right there. So we'll put that right there. And I'm okay with that ending right there. So uh, Lisa says, don't forget about the paste over under when you right click on an object. Yep. Don't forget, Justin. Don't forget that. Let me pick up these two objects. and Oh, look at that. Copy, paste, didn't drag it. We'll try that again. There we go. Nope, didn't work. <laughs> I'm going to flip it, and then I'm going to grab it, and I just drag the one piece. I want to drag both of them. Oh, I know. Nope, I don't know. <laughs> I figured out the secret, Justin. You're further along than I am. Are you trying to move it? I'm still trying to just ditch size elements here. Oh, so you got this. You know, I'm, I'm you're almost there. You got this. I'm almost done with the, uh, the middle portion of the helmet. Oh, sweet. See, you got this. And I made a fill. I'm pretty happy with myself. <laughs> it doesn't seem like much. It's the little victories that you get. Oh, look, I can, I can, I got the handlebars, Justin. We got this. I need the other side handlebars. I had a Change the angle of the fill here. And we'll say cusp. There we go. I got that. Oh, you drag the yellow, the line with the yellow end. Ah, Ooh. there it is. The yellow endy thingy. Now I see it. Okay. The yellow endy thingy. Is that a technical term? <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's described that way in the manual of Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I threw that at a vertical angle, and now I'm, I actually want to change my stitch length to, let's say, five. And my edge pad's good. So now, in theory, let me look. Tommy, five. Oh, I feel so accomplished. Hopefully, it doesn't look like it now, but it'll look like that later in the cartoons. Oh, I have to change a bunch of stuff here. I have an interesting thing going on here in my stuff, Justin. We're not going to talk about much about it, but we're going to we're going to have to do a little pathing. There we go. All right, not that one. Good. There to so is there a uh, a satin C function on this? Uh, yeah. There is. You probably mean one I'm going to tell you about. <laughs> Uh, it is above the, the input A, 
like the the ladder input there and this one needs to go there we'll just move him up yeah oh I got satin border um yeah i think that's it we'll go with that gotcha and let's get rid of the 3D view because I don't want to see that. And now it looks like for some strange reason, oh, that needs to come down here. We need to move the start point down. These remind me of bow ties, the start and end points. Yeah. That one, got it. And I got the dumbbells. That's good. But I don't have the start and end points, but I can get them. Yeah. Problem solved, Justin. We got this. I've like almost I'm almost done. You are. How's it going for you? I am not. <laughs> oh, we're at 844 even. Like I feel pretty accomplished because. There we go. Right in the middle. Oh, wait. No, I want to change that point to a circular point. Circular point. Circular point. That did not work. We'll just pretend it did, though. Because if we pretend... Oh, there we go. Ooh. Yeah. All right. I feel good about myself. Because if we turn on the 3D view, it looks pretty not bad. I got this. There we go. So I've got some movements here from machine. I can see those. Those are good. Um, I need to change my final object here that is red to my silver, which... It, no, I think that's white. Here we go. How many times have you used this software? Uh, I don't feel like I should answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm helping Justin. Oh, one zero zero one white. Oh, I got to change it to the different one. Let's change that to the one zero zero one. One zero zero one. Number. Go oh, that one. There we go. Yeah. But we're going to move this up above all of that. Oh, one more up. Because we don't necessarily need that extra color change. There. And let's hide the art. That one? Oh, I got this. All right. So, Jeff, when you change colors, click on palette to pull up the current colors on page. Let's try that. Color. Palette. Ah, that makes it easier, Justin. I got this. Yes, you do. Now the hard, the hard thing to do. Let's look at all of the settings. So contour, perpendicular. I think those are okay for fills. Um, let's get it. Let's grab satins here. Column, 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 column. And another column, and that one is a column, and that one's a satin border column. Column. There we go. So I'm at a 0.4 density. Edge pad looks good. Underlay, edge run, and parallel. These, the majority of these are narrower. So I am just going to go with a, you know, I think edge run and parallel will be okay. Inset at 0.5 point. That's typically more than I do. Um, I can set my knots here. So this one, I can say that I want it to tie at exit. I want this one to tie at exit. There we go. I want this one there to tie at entry and tie at exit so that we get our lock stitches. Not that one. Those two, though. That one and that one. I want to make sure that I get my lock stitches in there. There we go. Tie at entry. And these two should be both tie at exit. 
This one should be tie at both entry and exit because it's a singular. There we go. And this object here is the final that we do in that sequence. So we want to make sure that it ties at exit. Pretty sure it's going to automatically put the trims in. So we should be good there. And Stitch Player. We'll actually play. And not stitch by stitch. There we go. Going up. That looks good. We're going to speed things up here because... Go around. I'm still debating. I think that my uh, satins, that edge run, I'm, I'm debating on that edge run. Justin's like, me too. Yeah, it's, it's a little thin. The edge run's a little thin. Yeah. The, the, the satins. satins. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'd like to go with a center. So let's do that here. We go to create and I'm going to make sure that I grab all of my columns. There we go. I tend to like to adjust everything at once. Overall, I think I'll be okay. Set border, column, column. That's a fill. Let's go to our underlay tab. We got this. Edge run, parallel, zigzag. Freestanding, I want to stay with the parallel. I'll get rid of the edge run. I don't see center run as an option. Um, that's probably, it goes by, it's top stitch, underlay, ties, and quick style. So, yeah, I don't see edge run so it's likely that it is um they just use those as travel stitches so we should be okay setting that there and i'll roll through the stitch player again and then if we have time we'll show justin some really cool stuff that i think you're gonna like all right justin i'm ready let's do this you got yours up you can you share your screen. You just want me to show you the cool stuff. Yeah, I I, I stopped. I'll I'll share. <laughs> so I think you'll I think you'll really like this, Justin. So if we grab, I'm gonna make a satin here. Oh, uh, see, I like yours. I wasn't finished. I I can I tell. <laughs> <laughs> I stopped to watch you. You stopped. Oh, we set, we now, grabbed the popcorn. I, I, I do I do want to add, since Jeff doesn't want to say how many times he's used this. Honestly, this is the first time I've used this software. So it just goes to show you the learning curve that Jeff and I don't use this software on a daily basis. But the 10 times that Jeff has used this, he has some knowledge, even though we're tripping on things. It's going to take some uh, some time to get used to with a new software for us. So. You know what, Justin? I really like to watch uh, Lisa Shaw's After Hours mm -hmm. because that's where I pick up a lot of this. Just watching yeah. that. I don't sit here in my software and do it, but I watch that. So yeah. I get a, got an idea of what a lot of this stuff does. But right. I think if I drove it more, it would be um, a little easier. But this is this is something really cool I want to show you, Justin. So I'm gonna bring my I'm gonna bring my stream back up here. So let's draw a column stitch, right? And I'm gonna go uh, 12 and a half millimeters. Alt key. There. All right. You ready for this? He's not ready. I don't think he's ready. We're gonna have to postpone. <laughs> All right, so if we go here to there, if we go, oh, back up. Here you go. Boom. Seriously. <laughs> Wait, you ready? Hold on. Let's. 
Oh, wait, I have to change my underlay. Hold on. Let's go back to the create tool here and select it. There we go. And I want to change, turn my underlay off because, of course, we don't want underlay. My commands, I'm not going to mess with that. I would change my density to a 0.17. There, foam, see? Oh, there we go. Now let's run the little player. There we go. And it walks down. It's going to put the bridge. It's going to walk back up, put the cap, cover stitch down. Wow. <laughs> Justin's like, I wish every software had that. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So here's the other cool feature. Um, this. This is your heat map. Yeah, so, I've, I've seen Eric use this on his on his lives, and wow. this is pretty impressive here. Yeah, so we can tell. I'm a little warm in some spots, but overall, I think it'd stitch out okay. I think they should call this predator mode. Predator mode. See, look at that. Even the heat map here is showing it's not horrible. And that's, that's with the 0.16 cool. foam. Yeah, it is really cool. It's neat to be able to pull. Like, um, I've used it. I've pulled in puff files. And you can kick on that heat map, and you can look at the, uh, like, when it pivots around a corner. Mm -hmm. And you can see if it's dropping too many needle penetrations in one particular spot, and that's where. In that inside of the curve to see to make sure it's got the right amount of pass stitches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that it doesn't. Or short stitches, yeah. Or if you've got short stitches turned off, that's definitely a thing that I really, really like about this software. So, and then there's the density repair kit, but let's be honest. I think that should be the next after hours with Lisa. <laughs> Cause <laughs> that's how well I know how to use a density re repair kit, but let's grab a couple of comments here. Lisa says new interface to get used to you. You rock stars know what you're doing. I love what I love to watch this. I'm sure she en she's enjoying watching that. I like Predator mo Mode. Going to use that. I would too. And now we have four minutes, Justin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> four minutes. Um, so just watching you and, and seeing, like, Wilcom, it's you choose a tool. That tool pretty much has a, a stitch associated to it, a stitch type. And then it's just a matter of how you plot the point. This is a little bit different in that you pretty much are just using an outline tool for everything, right? And then you're either, do you apply the stitch after the fact? Or if you choose the stitch type up here, if you choose the stitch type up there, then that's the one you're going to digitize. Okay. So. And you have to make sure that if you're making a curve, like if that's a fill, you have to make sure that it's closed and it looks like it is with the tomato. It is. I just, I think I was, I was messing with the, uh, the settings, the settings earlier. And I think I had turned on the gradient, wherever that is. Oh, the, uh-huh. Let's I go back to create mode, and I'll select that. And then density, uh, pattern, pattern. I don't want to do a pattern. Emboss, nope. Contour, perfect. that's underlay, commands. So apparently, Justin messed it up. I messed it all up. <laughs> You know, the nice part, though, is, is I'm pretty sure if you close it and then you oh, open it again, it doesn't save. There you go. I got it. Faster I than got me. It. Um, so, yeah. I mean, there's... I don't suggest if you're digitizing to bounce back and forth between softwares on a regular basis. But I think having the different softwares that you have, like the 20 that Jeff has... Um, no, knowing I got a mortgage payment plugged in in USB drives over there. Knowing the the different 
different things that each software does and you can do one thing better or easier i should say better but easier in one software or the other or or even if you have certain uh if you are a digitizer and you have customers that want in a certain native format it's always nice to give them uh an array of different formats that you do and if you can master them all like jeff has and being a brilliance expert like him Man. one day jeff in my free time i'm going to be using this software and we're <laughs> gonna have we're gonna have another puff off but using brilliance that's what we should do you know not yet not yet <laughs> let's throw down justin because <laughs> i don't have 10 hours to do one design <laughs> I think that you would just need to watch some after hours. Actually, yes. I don't know if you, um, in brilliance by far has the best user manual I have seen. Oh, really? When it comes down to like, there's not only just like tools, how to do it. There's actually digitizing theory in there. Oh, wow. So not only is it like, this is how you do it in the software, but it also kind of gives you those, um, you know, rule of thumb things that you would learn from a teacher. So that's, that's really, really cool. I've, I've sat down and read the manual and I think it does. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff in there. So uh, Lisa says you only use density repair kit on design. Someone else, I'm going to guess else has digitized. I'm going to say that, or maybe a DST file. I'm guessing. Um, Letty says, what is the cost for brilliance? And does the nerd herd get a discount? Um, you know, I don't know the answer to either of those two questions. I bet it could happen. Uh, no. but it's different. It's different uh, modules that you purchase, right? You can buy different parts of it or the full blown thing. Yeah, there's like essentials, and then there's Stitch Artist One, Stitch Artist Two, and Stitch Artist Three. Um, so it it just depends on the level that you need. Uh, but Letty says I do think they take a lot of update suggestions for future enhancement enhancements. Pretty sure they do. Uh, I really like that it's like a buy once, cry once software too. You get all the updates. Um, you can go on their uh, website and download. Them. Yep. Yeah, I read that too, Justin. I wasn't <laughs> going to bring it up. I wasn't going to bring it on the screen, but I read it too. I was like, Man. I only did because you brought up reading the manual. I have digitizing books too. I've read those. So yeah. it's kind of the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, not really. I know. I, had, I read the manual. It's over. I had to uh, get a parts book out for my Tajimi the other day. And my, my operator, he's like, oh, man, you're going analog to find that part. <laughs> yeah, no, this is old school. <laughs> Pop out the book. Of, oh, man, that's funny. Analog. I'm going to use yeah. that, too, the next time my son opens up a book. <laughs> you went analog. <laughs> oh. Well, that was well, fun. I, yeah. I'm going to play with him brilliance more. I had fun with it. Um, hopefully all you guys that were watching had fun with it too. Uh, it's definitely a viable software. Um, I think that a lot of it just comes down into like your workflow. Like you said, jumping from one software to another, all of a sudden your brain doesn't like, you don't know all the keyboard commands. I imagine you could really fly if you knew all the keyboard commands in here. Right. Um, so I liked it. I had fun and I'll probably do it again. Definitely. But for those of you guys that were watching, hopefully it was worth the cost of admission. <laughs> and uh, I'll go ahead and run down some announcements here. So uh, applicate getaway ended. Uh, I heard that they will be um, posting up some of the recordings for sale after the fact. I heard that. I don't know that for sure, but if they do definitely be on the lookout for those. Cause I know I will be, I missed the live signups. And so I was a little bummed. I'm going to catch them. Uh, tomorrow is Education Friday, so there's the two regular guys, the half, which I, honestly is my favorite because of the hard cutoff, and mm -hmm. then uh, the take-up after that. Uh, coming up, uh, Dax, Minnesota, I think, just ended, or it's going to end. That was this week, so there's going to be Chicagoland coming up next. There's going to be Fort Worth that we're all going to be going to. Uh, last Saturday, we had a webinar with Lee Caroselli on uh, creating volume with blends. That was really cool. Mm -hmm. um, I learned a lot from that one too. So if you guys want to do that, you uh, access that, you can check out the recording. 
on that. Um, I know Justin's going to be releasing a font here pretty soon. We are going to be releasing a font. Yeah, yeah one so. of us. I'm going to throw sticks at Justin. We'll see. So just working on some documentation for that because uh, questions and answers are, are probably going to be a thing, I think. Um, but other than that, I don't have any more announcements. Do you have anything, Justin? I think that's it. Uh, we've just been working on this bot, testing and playing with it, but we'll have that release here soon. And after that, uh, Fort Worth coming up in the beginning of or mid-September. Yep. I'm looking forward to that one too. Um, it's going to be fun to get us all. I, I honestly think that we should talk to one of the machine manufacturers. They're going to have a machine down there and say, we need a machine for the house for three days. <laughs> Cause I have a feeling. Check out the happy booth there. Cause they will be running a design that I'm doing for them. I talked to the fine folks over there at uh, Tex-Mac and they, uh, well, I guess it's going to be the Tex-Mac, uh, booth but uh they have a machine running there that they'll have a uh, a design that i'm doing for them so check that out a justin armenta original that's that's correct there you go so with that guys uh, i'd like to thank you for hanging out with you again that's justin armenta from ja digitizing studios i'm jeff fuller from fuller embroidery works you're both here with the embroidery nerd and have a great evening good night guys <laughs>